An open question for you, how's business? Business is uh, improving, um, so our company is uh, focusing on hybrid electric applications for high power batteries, um, strong focus on marine applications and uh, our new marine module that we developed uh, is of high interest to the industry. And this new module, one of the questions that you received in your session related to whether your, your new model when running on low power would be suitable for quick replacement with, replacement with a charged one at the port rather than simply recharging it. Yeah, so you can replace the complete um, battery installation or battery strings if you containerize them. Then you can use existing infrastructure for changing the containers on, on board the ship that include then the, the battery system. But the uh, standard um, application is the um, fixed install installation of the battery strings inside the ship and then the replacement is not feasible. There was a lot of interest in recharging strategies for different vessel types. Please could you share your views on that and also whether you're working on any high concept variations such as a recharging strategy for a 10 megawatt per hour cruise ship. Yeah, so we, we are focusing with our applications uh, on hybrid electric uh, drivetrains. So the recharging then comes continuously from the onboard energy system, which could be a diesel genset or a fuel cell system, to just mention two opposite uh, extremes. Um, when it comes to fast charging of large uh, battery packs on ships, then we offer the, the correct solution for onshore booster batteries that can um, provide the needed uh, currents and also energy for a fast charge of 10 to 12 minutes for a complete uh, ship battery. Well, I think in your presentation you said one of the, the most hazardous aspects of battery management relates to the charging, the recharging and you referenced some DNVGL tests that your technology has been through that actually evidenced your offering is inherently safe. Yeah, so um, the, the worst case uh, possible what can happen to a battery is uh, an, an overcharge situation. In that case the cells are fully charged so they have the, the maximum of energy content uh, possible and then even overcharged that will uh, lead them into a thermal runaway, so the internal temperature increases up to a point where then the cells open and the um, burnable, uh, flammable electrolyte is released. And uh, we passed already two of these tests and since we use uh, lithium iron phosphate on the uh, cathode side, we don't experience any fire uh, and very low temperature uh, in that respect and there's no propagation from cell to cell. So there's, for that reason, a very safe system. There was a lot of interest in two other facets, which was cooling of batteries and whether air or water is the way to go, and also the perfect air temperature in the battery room. Yeah, so uh, if you run your battery systems at very low C rates, so you extract very little power in relation to the capacity of the batteries, then you produce very little heat, and that heat that you produce could be one or two percent of the power that is withdrawn can easily be um, taken away by, by air cooling. Anything in excess of that, so especially for high power applications, there's only one option, this is water cooling, and this is what we do. And uh, another important aspect of cooling and battery uh, temperature management is to maintain a 5% uh, um, temperature differential between the single cells in one packet, in one string, to have, uh, uh, let's say, um, a very homogeneous aging of the complete cell pack. That is very important as well. Given the pace of change and the rate that the technology is evolving and, and also the advent of new players, one of them is obviously yourselves, do you foresee the price of batteries coming down? Uh, during the last years we already experienced a uh, decrease in prices for the raw materials, also for the cell producers as we are, mm -hmm. so prices for electrolytes, for active material and also for separators which were um, yeah, crazily uh, expensive uh, are, are going down but there's a limit to it and uh, on the other side we also see scarcity for certain um, products, especially cobalt 
and soon also nickel will be um, on the table. So uh, we see only limited scope in, in let's say, uh, significant uh, decreases in the future. So I expect the sell price to stabilize for high volume producers at around 80 to 100 uh, US dollars per kilowatt hour on a sell level. You talk about scope. Just how much scope is there for these technologies in the maritime market? So um, <clears throat> I think batteries uh, can be used whenever you have uh, um, load profiles that are not homogeneous. So uh, peak shaving, load leveling applications always uh, uh, should be combined with the battery installation. Even though for deep sea going ships, uh, during their maneuvering period or the period they use their, their onboard uh, crane systems. Uh, for all other ships that only travel shorter distances, um, uh, a battery or hybrid um, application or full electric application makes sense from my point of view. And finally, we're sitting here at the inaugural Maritime Hybrid and Electric Conference in Bergen. We're about the midpoint of day one and you've spoken, you've mingled, uh, you've networked, you've seen the exhibition of course. In your own words, how have you found today's event? So, um, uh, I'm not here alone, I'm together with my head of sales and both of us are extremely busy to talk with all the people that would like to talk to us. So we already made uh, a couple of very interesting and significant contacts <clears throat> and the mix of people that we see here at the conference is just ideal for our purpose and market entry. So I'm really satisfied with uh, having visited this conference. I'm looking forward for the next uh, day and a half.